WC4511 is a brand new release. Uh, seed will be available of this onless variety uh, in the fall of 2021. Uh, 4511 was particularly developed for that grazing and hay and, and silage market uh, where those uh, particular uh, uh, attributes are desired. Uh, even though this was developed for a grazing type situation more so than grain, it does have quite good uh, uh, grain uh, yield potential to it. Uh, it has good quality to it. Uh, it has pretty good test weight to it. But these onless wheats generally will give up 4 to 5 to 6 percent in yield compared to our on, uh, on cousins. And uh, uh, when taking it for yield, that's something that you certainly need to be aware of. This is a very attractive line. It has a beautiful dark green color to it in the field uh, with bronze heads on it. Uh, very, very attractive. This variety did become susceptible to uh, stripe rust this particular spring on this uh, on this current uh, strain of stripe rust. So if stripe rust is an issue, it will be a variety that you'll need to treat uh, if you're going to uh, try to get it to grain production. Uh, if you're grazing it, uh, keep grazing it. It'll probably take care of most of the stripe rust problem out there. But uh, if you're looking for something for haying and or grazing, graze out, this will be a good variety to take a look at. WP4515 is a, uh, a variety and it's, it's really about quality with this variety. It's exceptionally good test weight, exceptionally good milling and baking quality. Uh, yields are consistent with this variety. It's always been one that's uh, never, never really let you down. It may not be the highest yielding variety, but it's probably not going to be the lowest yielding either. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit later coming out of dormancy, so it's one you can plant a little bit earlier in the fall, and you don't have to worry about a breaking dormancy in the springtime and catching one of those late spring trees. Now, one of the things that uh, has happened with this variety is loss of rust tolerance. It is highly susceptible to the new uh, strain of stripe rust, uh, and it has it lost its uh, leaf rust rating, or excuse me, its leaf, leaf rust resistance a couple of years ago. Uh, but if you're looking for something high test weight, looking for something with excellent quality, looking for something that can really uh, do a good job of filling grain during stressful times, this is still a very good variety. Uh, but be aware that it does need to be uh, treated with a fungicide because of the susceptibility to the rust, uh, leaf and stripe rust, uh, and, uh, and go forward appropriately. If you don't want to have to worry about that spraying, uh, this probably would not be a good variety. But if you're going to look for quality and try to extract some of those premiums from the quality, uh, certainly going to need to make a fungicide application of this particular variety. WP4595 is another one of our 2019 releases. Uh, it is more of a western type. It's medium height. It's medium maturity. Uh, it's, it's moderate tillering. Uh, and it, uh, it uh, has very high yield potential to it. Uh, it. It's particularly well adapted to those tougher acres uh, across the west. If you've got some tough acres, uh, that tend to get droughty. I think this variety fits that very well, uh, but it does have good upside yield potential as well. It has very good tolerance to wheat streak mosaic. Uh, it's it's kind of intermediate in its foliar disease response, uh, and it seems to be uh, intermediate to the new strain of stripe rust as well. Uh, protein is a little bit low on this variety. The test weight is exceptional with this variety. Uh, it's going to be a pound and a half, two pounds heavier than average, uh, which tends to, to uh, bode well for the western areas where we can get very hot and dry uh, during that uh, grain fill period and may drop some test weight. But this one maintains its test weight quite well. And again, it has exceptionally good drought tolerance 
so uh, well adapted to that western high plains area as well. WB4699 uh, was released in 2019. Uh, this variety is particularly well adapted to the central and eastern plains. Uh, it does much better in the higher rainfall areas because uh, it doesn't have an extremely large head. It's a very high tillering variety, so yields tend to come from the number of heads produced. And uh, may I say that it really produces a lot of heads. Uh, it's a short statured variety. It's kind of a later medium type variety. Uh, it has good leaf health to it. Now, in 2021, we have apparently have a new strain of stripe rust, and it has become somewhat susceptible uh, to uh, the new strain of stripe rust, but I would say that it's more of an intermediate to moderately susceptible line uh, to this new strain of stripe rust. It is, again, short in stature. It stands very well, uh, and has that excellent, excellent yield potential. It has the best Fusarium head blight tolerance, I think, of any hard red winter that's adapted to the central plain. It really has good head scab tolerance. Uh, the only thing that's really a detractant to this variety uh, is the uh, protein and test weight. They are pretty average to slightly below average, so uh, uh, that's one thing you need to keep in mind as you manage this variety. Uh, it's about disease resistance, it's about standability, and it's about extremely high yield with this variety. This is one, if you're in the central and eastern part of the Great Plains, you really need to take a look at. Uh, the last couple of years, it has won many, many of the tests, particularly in the east, and has uh, performed extremely well in the uh, nor in the central part as well. But this excellent selection if you're in areas particularly that have high rainfall. WB 4792 is a relatively new uh, release from Westbred. Uh, it is best adapted to uh, western environments. It does not possess good tolerance to uh, acid soils or uh, it's resistant to soil borne mosaics. So it needs to be uh, kept in the western environment. Uh, it has medium height. It's a kind of medium late maturity uh, for a little bit taller variety. It has uh, extremely good straw strength. Uh, it has decent tolerance to the rust. It is not tolerant to powdery mildew, uh, but uh, uh, powdery is not a big problem across the West. It's not anything that I would be overly concerned with. Uh, this variety should not be planted behind corn. It is extremely uh, susceptible to uh, fusarium head blight or scab. And uh, even in some drier environments, we've seen scab come into this uh, variety. So it, it's best uh, not planted after corn because of that specific reason. Uh, yields of this variety are very good, uh, very high yield potential, very attractive lines high test weight, uh, it has got average milling and baking protein quality. Uh, but this is one you need to take a look at for the western environment. It's just an exceptional variety that fit a lot of conditions uh, across the western highway. Winterhawk is a older variety. Uh, Westbred released this variety in 2008. It's best adapted to the western environment, particularly on the high plains. It's long been uh, uh, identified as a variety that has real good grazing characteristics as well as, uh, as grain production as it bounces back from grazing quite well. Uh, not great on most diseases or most foliar diseases, that is. Uh, it's pretty much intermediate on most foliar diseases. Uh, so it's not real susceptible and it's not real resistant to anything. Uh, it will benefit from, uh, from a fungicide application, but now not maybe as much as some varieties would. Uh, it has excellent quality to it, the test weight's good, protein's good, uh, and it has above average mill and bait quality. But uh, if you're in the western environment and you're looking for a tough, consistent performer uh, on the high plains, 
that has Wheat Street mosaic dollars to it uh, that we quite often encounter in that area. Uh, this is still a very good variety with exceptional heat grout dollars.